I'm Leo Chambriz and I'm presenting my film Cancelled Faces. And how come you're doing so many movies with Korea? I mean, the, or with East Asia? The one before was also shot there, if I remember right? It's I think not in, in a row. I made in between. Are we on, in, on record now? Yeah. Okay. Um, so I know not to stop you and cut you. <laughs> like, That's uh, all right. I can. <laughs> um, I made a film, a documentary in China before. It was 2000. I made it 2012. Um, but in between, I did films in, in Germany and also, yeah, so it's not like I'm just working there or anything like it. I did one, this one project in Korea in 2017 in the summer, and now I'm going to come back with a new project that I will shoot um, there and in Taipei. Yeah, but I also work a lot here in Germany. Mm -hmm. I finished now a project in the Los Angeles station. Mm -hmm. yeah. But where does the fascination come from about East Asia? Yeah, I think if I can be very, you know, I'm from Israel originally, and I don't live there, and I work there only rarely. So in a way, for me, it's uh, anywhere. It's kind of can be kind of the same because in any way, anywhere, I'm kind of a foreigner, I guess. Um, yeah, and there's something in this, in the, I think, in the spirit at this time that it's a very interesting place to be working in dialogue with culturally. I think that's, that's the main thing that draws me. Mm -hmm. And where did the idea for this particular movie come from? Idea? Uh, I, don't, I mean, it's a story. I came with the story to Korea. So I came with the story already. I came ready to shoot it in a place where I was never. So I, you can't say that it, it came from the place or it came from my experiences. It came from my personal experiences. Um, mixed with, uh, I guess, um, an interpretation, a reaction to more, um, uh, let's say, wider, wider uh, perspective on the reality where I live. I guess, um, yeah. So, and I, I just like basic. I, I personally f feel this tension. I think I try to portray in the film of. Um, I would say, I'd say it's a globalization and autonomy in a way that I know, for me, for, me, for example, my, for my own personal life, I know how joining, I call it the empire, uh, gave me some freedoms when I grew up, and I think it's true for a lot of people. But then you also feel this loss of certain things that maybe at first you are very happy to get rid of, but later on in your life you understand that they are uh, Important. I don't know. They are important for life, I guess, for your experience of uh, the world. Mm -hmm. And I think it's uh, this kind of tension uh, is what brought me basically to the story. Like, if you ask me where did the idea come from, that's the that's the answer. It's this feeling of uh, of not knowing, of of having these two poles, these two, yeah, that kind of uh, pull you. And you feel like you are kind of hanging them, you know, like you are on this uh, string in between them, and you ask yourself where should they go. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's the story of, of the, the guys, the two boys, their own life story, and they're like this uh, conspiracy paranoia without a conspiracy. I think that's how I feel about this film. It's like a co conspiracy film without a conspiracy. Uh, and also the story that's inside, like this physical theater uh, story about uh, Jerusalem is pretty much an expression of, of that tension of having um, a global empire, kind of, kind of a global empire that it's, you benefit from joining, you know, you get running water to your house from the aqueduct, you know, it's a good thing to join the empire, <laughs> but you lose something big. You know? and. Uh, yeah, I, I even connect it with queer, I think, for today. I was uh, with queerness today and how, um, yeah, you know, for example, how it's been used by people in power in order to submit others, in order to, to explain why wars are necessary. Uh, 
So I think it's a very apparent way to understand how, how crucial this, this tension is to our lives, that it can be used as a tool for war, basically. So that's the connection of the, I guess, that's, that's the, the, mm -hmm. the platform for the work. But if we stay with the, with the story of the two boys, yeah. this obsessive love story yeah. and the story of a conspiracy that is not a conspiracy, yeah. I mean, he gets very paranoid about it. I found it very fascinating to see this story evolve, to see this obsession. And then I was wondering, why are obsessive love stories interesting? I mean, I have the feeling that love stories very often about are about obsessiveness, about things that are not in everyday life. So is it, or what is it that makes it's them interesting? It's not in your, it is in everyday life, no? I know it from all around me. Okay. Is, yeah. Um, why is it obsess? I don't know. It's kind of, it works together, no? Isn't it the same? Yeah, maybe that's my experience. Maybe. Okay. I'm not in everyday life. I don't know. So it is a very personal movie. I would say that without giving any... Yeah, of course it's a person. I, I think it's one thing is apparent. Yeah, but in a, in a personal way, in a secret way, it's a person. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I think I'm a little bit like the character, like that you don't know, you don't know what he's thinking, even though he tells you the story, you know? That's kind of the thing that's going on there. Mm -hmm. Like you, you get his voice, but you actually don't know anything about what's going on in his mind. Because you don't know what he thinks. You only know he thinks. But yeah. I had the feeling that he also doesn't really know what is going on with, with him and inside of him. Maybe, yeah. I, I, I mean, my reference for that is, uh, I, I know it, it's uh, in Bertrand Russell, when he writes the history of Western philosophy, he gives this example about his friend who had the laugh, a gas that he took, and when he took it, he thought he had the answer to the meaning of life. And the... But he forgot it every time he was off the dragon. One time he managed to, to write down what the meaning of life is while he was high. And I don't remember what like the answer is. Like he was obviously meaningless. So I think it's the same thing. It's, he has the feeling without the, the thing. He has the, yeah, the sense of reality without reality. And talking about the other story within the story, the one that is a theater, or it looked like a theater play that was filmed. I mean, people wearing masks. What exactly was it? Was it a real theater play? Where did it come from? No, we made it from the film. So, okay. Yeah, I call it a physical theater, I guess. I used to call it dance theater, and I, I think maybe it's not really dance because they're not dancing. It's more physical because it's just moving in a weird way and you don't really understand what's going on. Uh, where did it come from? It was, I mean, it's, a, it's another layer of the same story, I think, for me. Uh, yeah. I work with these layers, you know? I'm interested in how, in layering reality. I, yeah, I, like I feel maybe it's that, like, if you layer it, you are able to look at it from the side, I think, so, yeah. But Sorry, but it doesn't make sense. I promise you there, <laughs> there is a sense <laughs> to what I just said, yeah. Um, but would you see it as a parallel story to the love story of the boys? Yeah, it's kind of the same story, no? Well, so you also see the love story of the boys as a story of invasion and globalization? Yeah, 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 for me. I mean, yeah, it's a... It's a it's, I can't, I, I don't say it's the story of, I would say that like, it comes from the same emotion, mm -hmm. the same fears, in a way. Mm -hmm. It's a way to look at these fears, I think, observe them on a personal level and on a political level, maybe. Well, a rather maybe curious question, the person or the character of Tilo Zalatzin, which is named in the play, does that actually refer to Tilo Zalatzin? Uh, I think I should say it's not. Okay. Because then, I, <laughs> otherwise, it's uh, Libel, I think. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. Well, that was. Just I needed a character that's pure evil. Yeah. Yeah. That represent pure evil, I think. Yeah, so it was an obvious uh, example. And another thing that I realized in the aesthetic of the movie was that you shot a lot of buildings. You took a lot of shots of buildings, mm -hmm. like houses in which a lot of people live. 
Does that also go into this picture of globalization, of people living in cities, of urbanization? I guess, yeah. I guess that's, I mean, I sh I, I, it's not, uh, it's a way to portray characters, I guess. For me, that's the process I'm going through. If you look at it from outside, if you look at it, and you, for you it's a, you know, these are decent apartments, actually. They are very nice apartments. It's not like slums or anything. It's not like in Europe. Mm -hmm. We're around, you know, the Mont Lieu, where actually it's like a nice, these buildings are nice middle class uh, apartments. Um, but, I mean, it has a, it has a, it, it raises questions, and it raises questions of identity, and it raises questions of, for me, also gentrification, I guess, and um, our imagination of, uh, of the past, and of, yeah, mm. and what is, how it's connected to our everyday, to the, you know, to, to, to our moving in space, I guess. Mm -hmm. So that's for me an expansion of these characters. It's not that, yeah, I don't try to say something about them. Like, but it to me, these, these buildings also had an air of anonym, anonymous, um, like an anonymous air around them, because you wouldn't see individuals anymore. You just had numbers on the houses, yeah. and the house looked completely identical. And, uh, yeah, it's a, uh, it's a question of anonymity and, um, and independence. But I think for me it's more a question. I'm not, I, I'm not given an answer. I'm just putting it out there and just, yeah. Did the movie already premiere yet? No, we do it tomorrow. Tomorrow? What do you expect? How will the audience react? I think they will like it. There's nice pictures and good music and... Uh, <laughs> I think it will be good. All right. Then I wish you a good premiere. Thank you very much. And thank you for the interview. Thank you.